In this video, we're talking about the last step, content delivery. This is getting that content to you. This is your traditional RF transmitter site or the servers for podcast or streaming. This is one of the places broadcast engineers tend to spend a lot of time. Many transmitter sites are on the top of mountains in the west or at the base of really tall towers in the Midwest and the east. This is where the magic of radio happens. Today, streaming and podcasting are gaining traction and creating a different style of magic. But there's more to content delivery than just sending it to a transmitter site or server farm. Let's say you have a radio show that other radio stations want to carry. How do you get it to them? Well, that's where one of our sponsors for today's video comes into play, LinkUp Communications. Our other sponsor for this video is ERI, because once you come out of the transmitter, you've got to get it to an antenna. You have to have an antenna, otherwise it doesn't work. Since this is a broadcast engineering channel, let's start with the traditional broadcast radio side of distribution. In the last video, we talked about the studio to transmitter link, or what I called it, content transport. We have our audio that's showing up at the transmitter site. Now what? Can we just stick it into the transmitter? <laughs> no, 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 no. There are some things that we need to do to the, to the audio first. Some stations may have an emergency alert system box at this step, but if there's no EAS box, then this is where audio processing comes into play. The audio processor does a few things. Modern day audio processors have several stages. The first is the AGC or automatic gain control. Think of this control as you turning the volume up and turning it down based on how loud the audio is. As more stations are operating unattended or have board operators who really aren't paying attention, this stage of the processor is important. Some parts of programming could be really, really quiet or really, really loud. A commercial might be produced at what's called full scale and the audio is really, really loud or a song may start off really, really quiet. Well, the AGC will automatically adjust the level of the audio so that it meets a built-in target of loudness. So the next stages of the audio processor can work efficiently. The audio then moves to the multiband compression stage. This is where the sound of the station is crafted. The audio is split up to different bands or parts of the audio. For example, the simplest is a three band audio processor, which will have audio below say 200 Hertz and applies compression to that section of audio. Then you'll have like a mid band, which is about 200 Hertz to about three kilohertz. And finally the high band, which is above three kilohertz. Compression is taking the loudest parts of the audio and bringing them down. Usually this is much faster of a response than the AGC and will use a ratio. For example, you'll have a ratio of two to one, and that's basically for every two decibels of audio that comes in, one decibel comes out. And the higher the ratio, the more dense the audio sounds. How the ratios are set and the speed of the attack and release of each band of the multiband compression will give you a unique sound. Newer audio processors have a watermarking step that's right about here, right after the multiband compression. In the United States, we have Nielsen, formerly Arbitron, and they measure the audience. That's a whole discussion on watermarking and Nielsen, so we'll shelve that for later. But the watermarking at this step is the best place to do it because of the way the watermarking hides in the audio. Next would be the limiters. Some processors have multiband limiters followed by a final limiter. Multiband limiters are just like the multiband compression, but with a faster response and a much higher ratio. The final limiter prevents peaks of audio from exceeding a specific value. With broadcast radio, your audio has to be limited to a specific bandwidth. And when your audio exceeds that limit as imposed by the FCC, you start to interfere with other stations or your own station. So moving on in the chain, your audio comes out of the audio processor as left, right audio or composite audio. And if you really want the best results, 
you want to use composite audio. For the simplest of terms, composite audio is basically RF, but at a different frequency. There's usually a composite input on the transmitter. You'll want to modulate as close to 100% as possible. I'll have another video about the details about transmitters, but we're basically, we're taking the audio, mixing it with some RF to make a different frequency of RF, then amplifying that RF, and that's really all a transmitter is really doing. Some of you may be coming from a station that is 300 watts or 50,000 watts. They're all basically the same. The higher the power output, the more amplifier modules that you have to have to combine to make that higher power. Again, we'll get to transmitters in another video. One cool technology that's come about for AM recently is called MDCL or modulation dependent carrier level. And this is important for AM radio. Briefly, this is taking the carrier level that is traditionally been at a set level, a set amount of power and modulating that downward when there's audio on the sidebands. It's snazzy enough technology, and, and we'll probably cover that in another video. But the reason stations would want to do that is to reduce the amount of electricity that they're using and lower the costs of operating the station. Okay, we have our transmitter. We've got our 300 watts or 50 kilowatts of RF, and now we need to get it out to an antenna. An antenna is simply a way to convert the modulated electrical energy and have it jump off through the air to another antenna, which will receive that RF, turn it back into electricity, stick it into a radio receiver, basically just kind of reverse what we just did on the transmitter side. And now you are hearing the radio. Okay, now this is where we're going to split up AM and FM broadcasting and actually FM and over the air TV are basically the same. So we'll lump them together. So starting with AM radio, the antenna is the tower. The height of the tower is a fraction of the wavelength of the frequency that the station is transmitting. So let's say our station is transmitting at 600 kilohertz. Our wavelength is roughly about 500 meters or 1600 feet. Building a 1600 foot tower in many parts of the country is not really practical. I mean, imagine a 1600 foot tower in the middle of earthquake country probably not a good idea. So this is why we take fractions of the wavelength and then we discover that it's resonant at specific fractions. So let's say our antenna is one quarter wavelength. That makes our antenna about 400 feet tall. Frequencies used for AM broadcast are not necessarily line of sight, but we'll cover that in another video. FM and TV are at a higher frequency, but the same concepts apply for wavelength, except this time, we have to put the antenna up high so that way we can have line of sight to the places that we want to reach. The antennas are much smaller and are hung in a, on a tower and kind of in the middle of the United States, these towers are typically the 1600 foot tall towers. So that way you can cover a lot of area. In the West, we have very tall mountains, so that height is made up of mountain and then the tower doesn't have to really be all that tall. This may sound really simple and I guarantee you there is a lot of engineering and science and math that goes into the creation of an antenna. And actually I have a video coming soon, maybe posted by the time you watch this, where I was able to take a tour of ERI's factory in Chandler, Indiana. And ERI is actually one of today's sponsors. ERI makes all sorts of antennas, and they are, in my opinion, the gold standard in broadcast antennas. If you need an antenna that's solid and will survive for many, 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 many years of operations, ERI is where you would go. At my previous job, we had an antenna that was hung around 1971. And as far as I can tell, it's still up on the tower today, ready to emit 50,000 watts of RF. This is a testament to the quality of the antennas that ERI makes. And if you need something to put that antenna on, well, they've got you covered there because they also build towers. 
So learn more about all the products that ERI has, from antennas to filters to towers to master antennas and more, at their website at eriinc.com. They've been doing this for over 80 years, so all that experience is at your disposal. Visit their website at eriinc.com. I did mention one of today's sponsors is also LinkUp Communications, and they provide a different kind of content distribution. They have several customers who send them content, and they distribute it to other radio stations across the country. ABC News for, is one of them, for example. ABC produces their newscasts in New York and then sends it to Denver to LinkUp's facility, who then marries it with cues and commercials for stations and then sends that out via satellite streaming and FTP. In a way, this is kind of the exact same thing that is happening with a broadcast station, except, well, the frequencies that LinkUp is using is much higher for satellite. It's not just for short content like the newscasts, but they distribute long-form content as well. Some of their other customers have multi-hour long shows and even full formats that are distributed through their industry standard XDS platform. Sure, you could make your own system, but then you'd have to develop it, maintain it, upgrade it, support it. And honestly, why go through all that hassle? You have better things to do. I be believe me, why have to do all that? Let LinkUp's professionals handle the distribution for you. And if you need support, they're there 24 hours a day to answer the phone to help you with your XDS receiver. So visit their website at linkupcommunications.com if you'd like to learn more. So that is the traditional content distribution. But today we're seeing an increase in digital distribution with streaming and podcasts. We take our live stream that we created in the last video where we talked about content transport and we're sending it to a server in a data center. Modern streaming services will utilize a content distribution network or CDN. The stream hits one server, then gets copied out to a bunch of other servers around the country or around the world. When someone wants to watch or listen to your stream, their computer sends a request of the server which then determines where they are in the world and then forwards their request to the server closest to them. The same thing happens for many podcasts as well. This makes the response much faster for the end user and reduces the amount of traffic that has to hit the one streaming server. Take YouTube, for example. You're watching this video on a CDN. There's not a computer powerful enough in this world that on its own can serve up all the traffic that YouTube gets. However, something to keep in mind is that if you're doing a live stream, you're increasing the delay by using a CDN because it takes time for the streams to replicate at the edge servers. The disadvantage to digital delivery is that you're paying for every bit that you transfer to a user. So if you have 10 listeners or viewers, that's not very much. But if you've got thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, that bill could start to add up depending on how big your data stream is. This puts an advantage in the traditional broadcast column because you're paying for one distribution and it doesn't matter if you have 10 people, a million people, 10 million people listening. All right, that's it. Thank you for joining me for this series of Broadcast Basics. If you missed the rest of this series, well, here it is in a convenient playlist for you. So you could also watch some studio tours or here's some transmitter site tours. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep learning.